أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم لا هي قلوبهم وأسر النجوى الذين ظلموا هل هذا إلا بشر مثلكم أفتأتون السحر وأنتم تبصرون قال ربي يعلم القول في السماء والأرض وهو السميع العليم بل قالوا أضغاس أحلام بل استراه بل هو شاعر فليأتنا بآية كما أرسل الأولون ما آمنت قبلهم من قرية أهلكناها أفهم يؤمنون وما أرسلنا قبلك إلا رجالا نوحي إليهم فاسألوا أهل الذكر إن كنتم لا تعلمون صدق الله العظيم in the previous session we went through the introduction of the surah and the first few ayahs of it but there was something left in these first ayahs that we need to talk about so inshallah having a quick look at the surah from the beginning the reckoning of the people has drawn near to them وَهُمْ فِي غَفْلَةٍ مُعْرِضُونَ While they're in negligence, turning away from it. مَا يَأْتِيهِمْ مِنْ ذِكْرٍ مِنْ رَبِّهِمْ مُحْدَثٍ إِلَّا اسْتَمَعُوهُ وَهُمْ يَلْعَبُونَ No new message, no new reminder comes to them from the Lord, but they listen to it while playing. لَا هِيَ قُلُوبُهُمْ Their hearts are paying no heed. Their hearts are preoccupied with other things. We talk up to this point of these ayahs, although the third ayah still continues, but at this time I will again stop here to go through the things that we did not cover in the previous session. And that was, if we look at the ayahs, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is reminding us, number one, of the Day of Judgment, and how close it is. Very quickly, going over some of the things we went through, or just quick reminder of day of dead mean being closed, what does it mean? As I mentioned, A person who dies, that's his qiyamah. So, that will be the time when his judgment will start. Number two, if, and as we know, that there are about 124,000 Anbiya alayhim salatu wassalam, messengers of Allah that came to this world. So if 124,000 were coming, and there is only one left, and when that one comes, what are you going to say? The Day of Judgment is here. Because the world was supposed to live only as long as there is deen in the world. When there is no deen, the world will perish. So, these Anbiya alayhi salatu wassalam came for the guidance of people to teach them how to live in this world. 124,000 approximately more or less were supposed to come. All of them came. And finally the last one came. So now we can say that now that this is the end of the world. That's it. The world is ending. No more prophets are coming. So this simply means once this deen is going to be forgotten about, this deen will change and people will forget this book of Allah, this deen of Allah, that is the Qiyamah. So, the day of Qiyamah has just come now. That's next. What's after Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? It's the Qiyamah. In the previous nations, when a prophet used to come, and the teachings of that prophet are changed. So, everyone will say, the next thing is, another prophet is going to come. What will happen next? One more prophet will come. If the teachings are changed, then another one will come. But now, if these things are changed, what will happen? Qiyamah will come. So, the next thing is Qiyamah. That's it. There is nothing... Between Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and the day of judgment. So, اِقْتَرَبَ لِلنَّاسَ حِسَابُهُمْ And beside this, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam reminds us that no one knows when he or she will depart this world. At any moment, at any time, as Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says in a hadith. <coughs> when I take a glass of water, he says, I'm not sure if I will live. I will have a life to drink that water, or before even taking a sip of this water, I will be out of this world. This is how uncertain our life is. Very amazing fact of our life. Of course, we know 
the most certain thing in this world is death. That everyone has to die. No one can say, I won't. And the most uncertain thing is the time of the death. No one knows when he or she will go. It could be anyone. So, the judgment is very close, the Yama is very close, everyone has to be ready at all times for the Hisab and for standing before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And we mention few ways to uh, remember the Qiyamah and to remember the judgment and to have our souls always ready and prepared to face Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala after we die. Reading the biographies of the scholars of Islam, we find a group of them, many of them, about whom their students will write that his life was such, his schedule, daily schedule, ibadah, with his timings, everything was such that if he would be informed that you are going to die tomorrow or tonight, there is nothing more he could do in his life. It will still continue with the same schedule. There can be nothing better that you can do he would do anymore because this is how he has set his schedule. So, this is preparation for it and having our souls ready for it at all times. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, judgment is getting closer and closer. Day by day is getting closer. But the amazing part is, وَهُمْ فِي غَفْلَةٍ مَعْرِضُونَ People are neglecting that portion, that part of their life. And, not only that they are neglecting it, مُعْرِضُونَ When you remind them of it, they turn away from you. They don't want to listen to it. You talk to people about Qiyamah, about judgment, about the day of judgment, about grace, and the things that people will go through in their qabr, in their grace. They don't like to hear it. This is what مُعْرِضُونَ means. Arab means that when a person reminds you of something, you are reminded of it, and you turn away. You don't pay any attention to it. This is Arab. Someone is talking to you, you turn your face on the other side. He comes to the other side, you turn your away from to the other side. Or, you let the person know that I don't want to hear it. This is Arab. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, I keep on reminding them. Keep on reminding them through different types of reminders, one after another. But whenever a new reminder comes to people, they listen to it while playing. At the time of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the reminders were coming in the form of new ayahs of Al-Quran al-Kareem. The reminders were coming in the form of mu'jizat, new miracles. People are seeing, seeing new miracles every day. But still, they don't want to pay any attention to it. They are playing. They are doing whatever they, they thought they, they wanted to do. And not paying any attention to these ayahs of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And even now, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is reminding us in many different ways. There are new reminders all the time. The ayah is not old. The ayah is still is fresh. The ayah is as new as it was revealed the day it, was, it came to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. No eye of Quran gets old. They all are fresh at all times. So still, there are always new reminders. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says it in Quran. سَنُرِيهِمْ آيَاتِنَا فِي الْآفَاقِ وَفِي أَنفُسِهِمْ We will keep on showing them our signs in the universe and within themselves. حَتَّى يَتَبَيَّنَ لَهُمْ أَنَّهُ الْحَقِّ Until it will be proven to them that this is the truth. So it will be proven to them through these signs. And we see these signs of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So many signs. Every day. Every night. Every new day comes with so many new signs from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. All the new bones that come to this world every day. These are all signs of the greatness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They are all reminding us of something. Every person that leaves the world. They are reminding us. That soon you will be leaving too. People are getting sick. People are ending up being in the hospital. People are having accidents. And you see people that are healthy, that were normal, that were talking, walking, eating, drinking, just as we normally do and 
as all of us are normally doing, all of a sudden you hear news that that person is dead, the other person is sick, the third person has a kind of disease where he cannot or she cannot eat normal food anymore. How many people we have around us in the world? They cannot eat whatever they like to eat. There are so many restrictions. Sometimes when the restriction from the Sharia comes about halal and haram, oh, too many restrictions. Why can't I eat this? And when a person goes to the doctor, now the doctor limits his diet to only few things, that you can eat only these three things, don't eat anything else. He doesn't say, I don't care what about, what you, about what you see. No. Now the doctor said it, it's my health now. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when Allah told us, it was your iman. But we didn't care. So restrictions will come. Anyway, every day is coming with signs. And then, the major signs that are taking place in the world. All of a sudden, situation of the world is changing. All of a sudden, you hear that thousands of people are going from the world. I mean, all of these are major signs that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is showing us His greatness that, oh, human beings, you should realize your limitations. You should know your limits. That, I think I can do this, and through our technology, or through our science, and we can do this, we can control this, we can control everything, and all of a sudden everything is gone. And finally, the person himself is gone. And everyone will go. If any person is sitting at any position today to control anything, to control anything, in this world. A house, we control whatever happens in this house, or a factory, business, store, kingdom, anything. Any person sitting at any position should realize, and has to realize, that he is able to sit on this position only because the person that was there before him had to leave. Otherwise, he would not get this position. The person before him had to leave. That simply means you will leave and someone else will be sitting there. Today is my house, tomorrow is someone else's house. Today is my business, tomorrow is someone else's business. Today my account, tomorrow is someone else's account. It's difficult to hear this, that our accounts, all of our belongings, <coughs> forget about just your belongings, Everything, everything that we have, even the clothes that we wear, either they will be given out to the poor people, or they will be thrown out in the trash can. If the person doesn't exist anymore. He's gone. Whatever we have, whatever we get, it's only because someone had it before us, or and that person had to leave, and we will leave, someone else will take over it. That's it. This is the reality of destiny. So, Every time there are new signs, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is showing us the signs. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, in spite of all of this, istama'u, they listen to all of these signs, they see these signs, while they're playing. Lahiyatan qulubuhum. Inshallah, I'll come back to this. There is more that we need to understand about it. Lahiyatan qulubuhum. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, their <coughs> hearts are paying no heed. And the hearts are totally busy in something else. So there are four words that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala used over here, which are four, four reasons, four different reasons that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala have mentioned in these ayahs that are keeping people away from remembering Asira, from following the book of Allah, and from following the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. What are these four words? Number, or four uh, reasons? Number one, ghafla. Wahum fi ghafla. The second word is, i'rab. The third word, word is, yal'aboon, playing. The fourth one is, lahiya lahu. Four reasons that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala have mentioned 
why people are turning away from the deen, why people are not paying any attention to the book of Allah, to the signs of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, why people are not coming back to the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, what's keeping people away from it? Is it something better that they have found? That's not the reason. If someone have, is there who's convincing them that there is something better than the book of Allah, that's not the main reason. These are the reasons. Number one reason that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned is ghafla. What is ghafla? In simple words, to really understand this ghafla, let me ask you this question. What is worse than a sin? What is worse than a sin? And we may think the worst part of it may be shirk. So if a person will do shirk, that's the worst thing. But within the deen, now for a person who considers himself to be a believer, for that person, if you want to tell him something that he's doing that is worse than a sin, what is that? The scholar says, it's in said, that worse than a sin is ghafla. What is ghafla? Ghafla means a person not paying any attention to anything. He, he wants to forget it. He says, let me just forget about everything. <laughs> he doesn't want to remember it. He doesn't want to use his brain, his mind for those things. This is ghafla. Simply means a person who is busy in his dunya. And he's always just busy there. He says to himself, I'm doing great. Why? The reason I'm doing great, at least when I go back home, night time, I make up for all of my prayers. I make up all of my five prayers that I've missed throughout the day. I know other people who don't even pray at all. And much beyond this, most of the people that I know around me, they don't believe in Allah. They don't believe in this deen of Allah. So I'm doing great. This is ghafla. That a person is committing a sin, and then his mind is telling him, he's telling him so, that I'm doing great. So he doesn't want to even come to this direction. A person who commits a sin will realize someday that I'm doing a sin. And then... He will have the tawfiq, inshallah, to ask Allah's forgiveness. Ya Allah, please forgive me. I know I'm doing wrong. But a person who is in ghafla, who feels that he's doing great. Alhamdulillah, what I'm doing, I'm doing is greater than what I'm expected to do. Now, this person has a very little chance that at any time he's going to come back. Because I'm doing great. Imam Ibn Kathir, rahimahullah, have narrated in Al-Bidaya wa Nihaya, that when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala cursed shaitan, so shaitan said to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, لَا أُعُدَنَّ لَهُمْ صِرَاطَةَ الْمُسْتَقِيمُ ثُمَّ لَآتِيَنَّهُمْ مِنْ بَيْنِ يَيْدِيهِمْ وَمِنْ خَلْفِهِمْ وَعَنَ إِمَانِهِمْ وَعَنَ شَمَائِلِهِمْ وَلَا تَلِذْ وَأَكْثَرَهُمْ شَاكِرِينَ That, Ya Allah, I will be sitting for them in every path, on every street, on every direction, I will be sitting for them, to misguide people. And, I will attack them from the front, from back, from right and left. I will be attacking them from all sides. This is the ayah Quran. And you will not find most of them doing sujood. They will even neglect the salah. That's the most important ibadah. And the reason, main reason he mentioned this because he didn't do the sujood at that time himself. So I will stop them also from doing that sujood. So, Imam Ibn Kathir Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said when he said this to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said I will keep the door of the tawbah open for them so as long as they are alive and they ask me for forgiveness I will forgive them and whenever they are ready to repent I will accept them Shaitan said to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Ya Allah if this is the case then I will make them commit sins without realizing that it's a sin. Now if a person doesn't realize this, uh, that this is a sin and is committing it, he wouldn't say istighfar for it. He will say, Alhamdulillah, I'm doing great. 
And most of the time, this is how shaitan affects people. And this is called khafla. That a person doesn't want to remember. <coughs> he has forgotten. Look at what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Quran al kareem about the kuffar and their situation in the sight of Allah. They are like animals, in fact, worse than animals. What's the next part of the ayah? They are ghafilun. They think they are doing great. When Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam asked them, how come you people are worshipping idols? Do you realize, at least, do you realize you are doing something wrong? And the answer was, مَا نَعْبُدُهُمْ إِلَّا لِيُقَرِّبُونَ إِلَى اللَّهِ زُلْفَى Muhammad, you are missing something in your life. They are telling this to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, you are missing something in your life. What is that? We are worshipping these idols, because these idols will get us close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So we are doing a great service to Allah by worshipping these idols. See the ghafla? That by worshipping idols is still the person thing that he's doing great. In fact, the people who are not worshipping idols, they have they are missing something that will get them close to Allah. It's just like a person who prays and he feels the people who are not praying, they are missing something. Those people who are worshipping idols, they feel that the other people are missing something in their life. Let's see how shaitan is attacking people. Now, quickly we come back to our souls. In reality, if we look at our souls, most of the time this is what happens to us. The thing that is keeping us away from practicing being better than what we are doing now is we are in ghafla. That I'm doing this, I'm giving this much charity every year. I fast for the month of Ramadan. <coughs> I perform salah. These many prayers every day. So, I'm doing great. And then, I'm comparing myself with those who are not even doing this much. So now, my nafs is telling me, that, mashallah, Jannah is waiting for you. Angels are just standing over there to welcome you. Because you're doing so great. This is the ghafla. If we would realize, if we would get the right information of our souls, and we realize what's wrong we are doing, then insha'Allah, we will be thinking of getting better, of doing better. I know that this is a sin. What I accept myself, can I afford to live a life of a sinner throughout my life? To myself, I would say no. And therefore, I would try to convince myself what I'm doing is great. This is where ghafla comes. This is ghafla. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned this as the first reason why people are away from the deen of Allah. So now, when I perform, when I perform salah, every day in salah I recite some surahs. And you know what surahs we recite every day in our salah. So now, at the end of the day, when we ask ourselves this question, and whenever we are reminded, do you read Qur'an? Do you ever recite Qur'an? And I say, yeah, yeah. Every, in Salah, every day I recite Qur'an. So we are convincing ourselves I'm doing great by even reciting Qur'an. See how much I'm doing? Every day in Salah I'm reciting Qur'an. So the person would never think of getting better. This is ghafla. And therefore Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, وَذْكُرْ رَبَّكَ فِي نَفْسِكَ تَضَرُّعًا وَخِيفًا وَدُونَ الْجَهْرِ مِنَ الْقَوْلِ Remember your Lord. Now, this is the treatment. We are going from the disease to a treatment. How to treat it? Remember Allah in your heart. With a lot of humbleness. And with a lot of cry to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And secretly. Not just in public. Secretly, when you're by your soul, even at that time, keep on remembering Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Keep on doing the zikr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. 
دون الجهر من القول بالغدو والآصال مورنينج اند ايفنينج ولا تكن من الغافلين دو نوت بي اوف الغافلين and don't be for of the ghafleen. So, in order to stay away from ghaf- the order to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Ya Muhammad, you don't want to become of a ghafleen. <coughs> of course, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam would never. Unimaginable that the Prophet of Allah would ever forget Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Aisha radiallahu anha say about him, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Kana Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Yadkurullah ala kulli ahyani. He always used to remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in all situations. That is a way out of Allah. That morning and evening, every morning and evening, the person is remembering Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, is busy in doing the zikr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the tongue, the heart are busy. Subhanallah, alhamdulillah, la ilaha illallah, Allahu Akbar. And the dua that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam taught us for doing everything, Entering the masjid, leaving the masjid, entering, leaving home, entering home, dealing with our families, and eating before we setting the meal, after finishing it, going to the bathroom, coming out of the bathroom. You name a situation, you will find some du'a about it. What is all of this? This is dhikrullah, remembering Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, so that we are out of the state of ghaflah. Because ghaflah will become worse than a sin. A sinner considers himself a sinner, and then he will try to repent. But a person who is in ghafla considers himself to be doing great and never repents. Now, very quick look at the general situation of the ummah in regarding to this ghafla. How many times we receive this question? That why the ummah is going through a lot of difficulties? And the answer may come, oh, because of how many sins the Ummah is committing and the situation of the Ummah, look what we are doing, how far we are getting from the deen of Allah, from the book of Allah, from the sunnah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, then right away, the next thing you will hear, yeah, but it's still, it's better than being a kafir and better than being uh, of the kuffar, they don't even believe in Allah. So now at least we believe in Allah, so we should be doing better if it comes to ibadah, because of the ibadah, so at least we believe we do certain things, they're not even doing this much, so our situation should be better than them. them. <coughs> See, this is when we forget. You have your, your children, and you see some other children from the street. All of these children are doing something that you don't like. You will stop your children, you may tell everyone not to do it. But the other children, they decided not to listen to you. And your son was also part of them, and then he continued to be with them. So you're going to go grab the hand of your son, pull him away, let's go home. How about all of these other children? Why don't you take them home? They don't belong to my home. I will take my home, only my own children who belong to my house. They belong to me, I will take them to my home. So I'm going to make sure, I'll grab your hand, I'll pull you inside, I'll take you out of the situation. The other children, that's the different. They decided that they don't want to listen to me. I told them, they don't want to listen. Let them do it. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reminds the people of Iman by shaking them up. Because he does not want the people of Iman to be punished in Asr. And if a person will not repent, that person will have to pay for it in Asr. So there is difference in treatment. <coughs> Always look at the history. When we read about the previous nations, the Quran continuously talks about Bani Israel. From the beginning of Surah Al-Baqarah, that is said, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did this to Bani Israel, he did this to Bani Israel, when they disobeyed, uh, they were punished in this way, then they disobeyed, and they got out of punishment. All kind of punishments, the mountain of Tur is hanging over them. Why all of this? Now, if they will look back, only ten years back, Ya Allah, we're always doing much worse than this. 
He never got none of these things. How come we are getting it? That would be a very wrong comparison. A person who is in the high seat, he's holding one of the very high seats, he's comparing with him, himself with the criminal. You think that you want to be in the position of Fir'aun? Okay, then just go over there, be with Fir'aun. That's it. Then I won't do nothing to you. Then that day will come when you will be with him. But, if you are saying and claiming and trying to be out of that situation, you don't want to be Fir'aun, then, my responsibility, I will keep on telling you what is right and what is wrong, and whenever you disobey, I will punish you also for it, so that you come back before it's too late. ولولا أن يكون الناس أمة واحدة لجعلنا لمن يكفر من الرحمن لبيوتهم سقفا من فضة ومعارض عليها يظهرون الله سبحانه وتعالى says in Surah Al-Zukhr if this was not a fact that even Muslims would turn away from the deen of Allah I would give the disbelievers houses and furniture in their houses their doors, their doorsteps made out of gold and silver take it you want this? take it by rejecting my book you need those things? Okay, go ahead, take those things. I'm giving you those things. But that day will come then. <laughs> so, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Ghafla, this is the thing that is keeping people away when we think we're doing great. When we think that, oh, I don't need to change. Other people, everyone else has to change in the world, but me, because I'm doing great. The situation of the ummah is that. How about myself? Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said in the hadith, Man qala halak al-nas, fahu ahlakuhum. A person who says, all the people are bad, he's the worst of those. He's, not, he's in ghafla. He doesn't realize what wrong he is doing. He sees all the other people. And he's, look, those people were punished because they were doing all of these things. May Allah protect us. But if people will start getting punished for what they do, we know where we belong to. So, this is ghafla, to think that I'm doing great. We need to consider our situation, look into our situation, and come back towards remembering. The opposite of ghafla is dhikr. The opposite, this is the opposite of ghafla, opposite of ghafla. This is why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Wadhkur Rabbah, remember your Lord. Do the dhikr, this is the opposite of ghafla, and don't be of al ghafineen So, a person who will be in the state of dhikr, he is out of ghafla. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, said in a hadith, shaitan, wait for a person to forget about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the remembrance of Allah. And he keeps on whispering to the person, he sits on his nose and keeps on whispering to the person. فَإِذَا ذَكَرَ اللَّهَ خَنَسَ Whenever a person remembers Allah, shaitan goes away. As soon as the person becomes ghafil, forgets Allah, the person, shaitan comes again to whisper to the person. So, this is ghafla. I'raz, a person is being reminded, and he turns away. He sees the reminder one after another one. He doesn't want to pay any attention to it. You read the ayahs of the Quran to this person. He says, no. <coughs> I, I don't worry about it. Well, or so many things. Just one of the very simple statements that we hear many times after you mention a mas'ala of deen that someone may feel it's difficult for him or her to follow. And you tell them that, look, this is the ayah of Qur'an, this is in Qur'an, this is the hadith of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa Normally, the next thing will come to you is, but brother, do you realize we are, we are in America? This is Arab. Arab. You turn away from it. I know it's there, but I can't do it. I don't want to do it. When I ask Allah. Arab, turning away. The third thing is lab. People playing. Playing anything besides doing what we are supposed to do in this world is playing. And what are we supposed to do in this dunya? Do the ibadah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Remember, now, ibadah of Allah doesn't mean just 
when you are in Salah, then you are doing the Ibadah of Allah. And when you are sitting in the, with the program, then you are in the Ibadah of Allah. When you have a Quran in front of you, you are in the Ibadah of Allah. When you have a Tasbih in your hand, then you are in the Ibadah of Allah. No, no, no. It's much beyond this. Remember, every morning when we leave our home, we are going to work. All of that time can become Ibadah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. After you finish your work, you come back home. Your time that you're spending with your family, even that can become part of the ibadah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. <coughs> it's not necessary that a person would think that ibadah is only certain things and few forms of worship. The whole life of a mu'min can become ibadah. By doing just few things. Number one, correcting the intention. Correct intention, I'm going to work, not to, just, not to just accumulate a lot of money, not to just, because to do something, I have nothing to do. I'm going to work because it's my responsibility. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given me this responsibility that I have to take care of a lot of things. I have to take care of my family. I have to fulfill their needs. And there are a lot of other things that I do with this money. That is for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is why I'm going to work. Now this is Ibadah. You're doing it because it's an order from Allah. It's something that Allah asks us to do. In fact, some of the hadiths indicate that one of the great form of Ibadah is earning. In a halal way. Just look at this beautiful hadith of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam where he says, At-Tajr al-Saduq al-Ameen. A businessman who is truthful, trustworthy. بَيْنَهُ وَبَيْنَ الْأَنْبِيَاءِ دَرَجَةٌ وَاحِدَةٌ There will be only one step or one level difference between him and Anbiya alayhi salatu wasalam. He will be only one level below Anbiya alayhi salatu wasalam in Jannah. What, which ibadah are we talking about? Tijara. Business. Trade. Work. The person is truthful. Trustworthy. He's doing it for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And he realized that I'm doing it because as a believer, this is part of my responsibility. Look at the status that this person is getting. This is the first thing. Correcting our intention. Number two, making sure the earning is halal. Whatever we are doing over there, it's halal. Number three, making sure that we fulfill the fara'il of the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That because of work, the person is not missing the salah. Because of the poor work, the person is not just ignoring his uh, children's deen and iman. Because of the work, the person does not, is not just giving up his deen and iman. So, fulfilling the responsibilities that come to this person towards the, from the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So if these things are taken care of, that whole time that we are spending at work, the whole thing is ibadah. And the whole thing will become rewarding. And coming back home, one of the scholars says that when I come home, before I start playing with my children, I just say to my soul, just remind my soul that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam used to play with his children, and this is a sunnah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, that when you come home, you have your children there, you spend some time with them, you play with them. So he says, just, I give myself a moment to think about it, and then I start playing with my children, throughout the time that I'm playing with my children, and spending time with my children, becomes my brother. Because my intention is, this is the sunnah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. But now remember, it doesn't mean that you just fulfill this sunnah for 24 hours a day, just playing at home, doing nothing else. Of course, we all understand that, that taking care of other responsibilities, but the point is that everything in the life of a mu'min, as long as it's done with the proper, with the right intention, in a right way, according to the instructions given in the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and without neglecting the other farayas, that thing, the whole life of a mu'min becomes ibadah. So, i'rab, I was, I was lied. Anything besides what we are supposed to do in our life is lies. Now we can understand that it's up to us many times really that even 
the work that we do, everything that we do in our life, a lot of things that we do, those things can either become lahim or they can become part of our ibadah. There are a lot of things. Our eating. When the person is eating, when the person is eating, that food can become either lahim. Why are you sitting and eating here? Oh, I'm just sitting and eating. You know, I have nothing to do. This is life. But I'm sitting here and eating because I need some energy. I have a lot of work to do. Inshallah, through this energy, I will use this energy for the salah, for fasting. The month of Ramadan is coming. Inshallah, I'll use it for it. No, this is, this is ibadah. This is not life. <coughs> and there are certain things that can never become ibadah. They will only be life. And those are the things that are forbidden in the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Let's like some time. Let's go and kill some time. Now, that killing of the time, what is that? That is only life. It cannot be a bad Then the person doesn't know what to do. So, and there are a lot of other things. Things that are muharramat, things that are haram. Nights of Ramadan. We heard the Imam saying there is a lot of reward in staying up for the night. Okay, we'll do the hajjah in the last portion of the night. We will go to the masjid and our Imam there, or someone in the masjid, he leaves the salah, the last portion of the night, we will do it with them. But if I just stay like this here doing nothing, I will fall asleep. So here, okay, three hours before that, let's watch a movie. Watch a movie for what? So that I will go and perform salah of the hajjah. <laughs> This is all that. It, it cannot become ibadah. There is no way of making it ibadah. Bad things, forbidden things, things that are muharramat already in the deal of Allah, they cannot become ibadah by having a good intention to it. So they will not change. Mubahat will change. And they will, through good intention, they will become ibadah. So, these are three things. The fourth thing that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned is lahu, lahiyatan qulubuhum. What does lahu mean? Anything that will get your heart stuck in it. Anything where our hearts will be stuck in it, and now is not coming away out of it. That is lahu. The heart of a mu'min should always be attached to the ibadah of Allah, to the deen of Allah, and to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, to the remembrance of Allah. No matter what this person is doing. Driving the car, doing work, even playing. Doing whatever. Let me keep on looking at my watch. It's time for Salah. We have only an hour before Salah. So okay, we are playing, but we have to watch. It's time for Salah. Now, he's looking at the time, every time when he looks at the watch, this is part of his Nirvana. That's the worry that he has. Heart is a text to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, to the ibadah of Allah. The hadith that talks about seven types of people that will be on the, under the shadow on the day of judgment. When the sun is only pissed away from people, heaven people are sweating bad. One of those people are رَجُلٌ قَلْبُهُ مُعَلَّقٌ بِالْمَسَاجِدِ A person whose heart is attached to the masajid. His heart is attached to the ibadah. His heart is attached to the salah. After one salah, he is worried about the next salah. He did the next salah, now he is worried what I am going to do for the next salah that comes after this one. His heart is attached to the ibadah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So heart of a mu'min should always be attached to the ibadah of Allah, to the remembrance of Allah. Physical body can be involved in many other things. But the heart should never be in ghafla and should never turn away from it. So now, when the heart is attached to something else, that is called dahu. That this person now, his heart is not coming to the remembrance of Allah. Even when he is in salah, he is thinking about his business. He is in salah, he is thinking about his car. He is in salah, he is thinking about his home. This is lahu. When the hearts are turned away from it. From the remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And something is holding the heart. Something is holding the heart. Not allowing it to come back. Normally, we call it dunya. In simple words, we call it dunya. Because no matter what that thing is, it will be something of this dunya. For some people, it's their words, for some people will be their, whatever their hobbies are, for some people will be their families, for some people their children. This is why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Quran al-Kareem, إِنَّ مِنْ أَمْوَالِكُمْ وَأَزْوَاجِكُمْ عَدُوُ إِنَّ مِنْ أَزْوَاجِكُمْ وَأَوْلَادِكُمْ عَدُوُ وَلَّكُمْ فَحْذَرُهُمْ All you who believe, some of your 
families, wives, spouses, and your children are your enemies, beware of them. Those are the ones who will keep you away from remembering Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So, four things that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala have mentioned in these ayahs that are keeping people away from remembering Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, from coming back to the deen of Allah. When we go back, think about these four things and see which of these things is keeping us away and how can we treat our souls. Number one is ghafla. Number two is i'rab. Turning away in spite of reminders, we turn away, give our souls excuses. Number three, la'ad, playing. Number four, la'ad and qulubum, hearts are being preoccupied in something else. So, there is no room for remembering Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Al-Ahzab, مَا جَعَلَ اللَّهُ لِرَجُلٍ مِّنْ قَلْبَيْنِ فِي جَوْفِ Allah never gave any person two hearts. Quran is not a book of medicine. It's not mentioning this fact so that doctors won't have to investigate anymore that how many hearts a person has. It's, that's not the purpose. The purpose is to tell us that you have only one heart, either attached to the dunya or attached to the deen. If you attach it to deen, it will be staying away from dunya. If you attach your heart to dunya, it will stay away from remembering Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the akhirah. A person who loves dunya does not like to remember akhirah. As soon as you remember akhirah, that just destroys all of our desires. Really, it will destroy all the desires. Look at the beautiful hadith of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Haktiru dhikra hadim il al maut. Keep on remembering the things that destroy the desires. Al maut, death. Say a person is enjoying. He's in one of the most enjoyment uh, and one of the best situations in his life. And all of a sudden he remembers, what if I would die now? What will happen to this person at this time? Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam have narrated that in the previous ummas, a person, a king, who was sitting in his castle, enjoying his life, using all the luxuries of the life, all of his servants, slaves, and people are around him, standing around him. All of a sudden, someone knocks at the door. Someone went to open the door, and he finds there is an old man with some dirty clothes, a poor man, knocking at the door. What do you need? I want to see your king. He is busy. He can't see you at this time. The man closes the door, goes back. This person knocks at the door harder than before. Another person comes. What do you need? I want to see your king. He is busy. He can't see you. And then he looks at the situation. He's, do you think he's going to make, meet someone like you? He says to him, tell him that I have to talk to him about something very important. He closes the door on his face, goes back. He knocks even harder. Someone comes and opens the door. This person is scared making his way inside. He says, what do you want? I need to talk to your king. But you can't just come in like this. I'm not asking your permission. Who is that? Look at this poor man. <coughs> anyway, for some reason, whatever, of course, from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that person got so scared of this poor man talking to him in that manner, he just let him come in. And this person goes until he gets to the king. He holds the ear of the king and says to him, I am Malakul Maut. I am the angel of death. And now it's your time to go. This is what I came here for. So he says to him, would you please give me a little chance? There are a few things that I just need to finish with. Time is over. Didn't you have all of this life to do all of those things? He had enough opportunity. And he takes his life. That's it. A person who's sitting in that position, everyone is looking up to him, he's enjoying and everything. That's it. That, came, that thing came, everything is gone. So, we always have to remember, this thing is coming soon. And when a person will remember that, then he will remember, then this, these things will keep our desires away. So, there is only one heart. That heart will tell us to remember uh, Asura and prepare for it, or this heart will tell us 
No, no, keep on preparing for this dunya, don't worry about Akhira. But very quickly, I need to make one more reminder, and that is, never think that if a person is working for Akhira, can never use anything of this dunya. He can never earn dunya. He can never live comfortable in this dunya. All of these things are allowed. Imam Ghazali, rahmatullahi alayhi, has given a beautiful example of this. He says, this dunya for a human being is just like a water for a ship. Have as much water as you want. And your ship will be running smoothly on the water. Just make sure there is no hole in the ship. The water will start getting into it and the ship will be blown. So he says, dunya, keep it outside. If it comes, it comes. If it goes, it goes. It doesn't hurt your doedeen. Keep it outside and keep on using it outside. Don't allow it to get into your heart. Once it will get to your heart, then you are drawn into this dunya. So, as much as you have outside, have it. Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah, Allah, many great people had it. But they were keeping it outside. Whatever is gone, that will not just destroy their lives. It will not take everything away from them. Dunya came and gone. One of the great scholars of Islam, he had a store where he used to sell pearls. One day, someone brought into the store and the most expensive pearl he had in the store was stolen. When he found that out, he just puts his head down for a minute and then he puts his head up and says, Alhamdulillah. Children and students around him asked him what this Alhamdulillah was about. He said, I was looking into my heart to see if I'm really complaining about it, if my heart is really just broke because I love that. So I realized it was a day when I didn't have it. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave it to me. So I thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for giving it to me. Today Allah decided to take it from me. Alhamdulillah, that was his. He gave it to me for some time. He gave it to someone else now. I'm not worried about it. It's gone, it's gone. This is having outside, just like a water out of the ship, out of a boat, keeping it outside. There was another well-known scholar of Islam, Khalidul-Din al-Attar, rahmatullahi alayhi. Attar means a person who sells perfume, pepper. In those days, Attar was used not only for a person who would sell perfume, it's pharmacist. So they used to have a pharmacy where they would sell medicine, and they would sell all the perfumes also. <laughs> so now, if you go to a store that has a lot of bottles of perfume and then full of bottles of medicine, imagine how many thousands of bottles you will have in this store. So Farid al-Din al a businessman, he is in the store, an old man comes into the store, starts looking around. So he asks him, can I help you? He says, no, I'm just looking around. Okay. And the person just standing looking here and there, looking here and there. So again, he approached the person and says, sir, can I help you? You spent so long time just looking around. Are you looking for something special? No, I'm just looking at these bottles. What are you looking at these bottles for? Do you want to buy something? No, I don't have, I don't want to buy something. I don't want to buy anything. So why are you looking at these bottles for? I'm looking at these bottles with a surprise, thinking that how would your root, your soul, come out of all of these bottles? What do you mean? My soul is in my body? It doesn't have to come out of all of these bottles. He says, your heart is so badly attached to these things that each and every bottle of these bottles here that's in your store is your life. And your soul is attached to it. When you die, your ruh has to come out of all of these bottles. So I'm thinking, how are you going to die? What will happen to you at the time of death? And really, it was a big reminder that if a person is leaving home for some time, we remember our homes, comfortable house, bedroom, and... Uh, 
uh, our comfortable cars, those expensive things that we have left behind, and our things is gradually the person said, remembering all of these things, hearts are tasted. So this person now, his heart is when a person's heart is attached to all of these things and he's leaving this dunya, of course he will be thinking, I'm leaving all of these things behind me. And those worries are really killing the person worse than the soul departing. These are worries in the mind of the person at this time. He looks at his children, he thinks about his dunya, his business, everything goes, I'm leaving at this time? How can I leave? I'm not ready to leave. So he said to him, I'm just thinking how your soul will depart all of these bottles. So, if our heart is attached, there is only one heart. If our heart is attached to dunya, then it's not attached to akhirah. <laughs> Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said in a hadith, narrated by Aisha radiallahu anha, Man ahabba liqa Allah, ahabba Allahu liqa. Woman kariha liqa Allah, kariha Allahu liqa. A person who loves to see Allah, Allah loves to see this person. And a person who dislikes to see Allah, Allah dislikes to meet that person. Aisha radiallahu anha got worried. Ya Rasulullah, normally people don't like to die. The indication in this hadith is that every time you should be looking forward to die because you go and see Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is not our situation. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, no, this is not what it means. It doesn't mean that you're always looking forward to die and I can go and see Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It simply means a mu'min because in this dunya he prepares for akhirah. So at the time of death, Allah shows him what good he has done and what Allah has prepared for him over there. So he loves to go back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because Allah is showing him, look, this is all what I have for you. Look, you have this, you have this, you have this. So he loves to go back. At the time of death, he sees all of that. Ya yeah, Allah, okay, I'm ready to go. And a person who did not work for that, worked only for the comfort of this dunya, never worried about akhirah, was only building everything in this dunya. At the time of death, Allah shows the person, you have nothing over there. This is what you have in your grave. This is what you have in your akhirah. So the person dislikes to go there because he sees nothing over there that's good for him. So he dislikes to see Allah. Allah dislikes to see this person. So the bottom line is, it all will come down to one thing. No matter how much time we are spending for dunya, what work we do, how much we earn, what we have, how much we have. Our hearts should be attached to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Number two, we should spend our time doing the ibadah of Allah. We should, we must specify a time on our daily schedule when we are doing the ibadah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and make sure we are fulfilling all the faraid of the deen of Allah so that when these things are there, inshallah, at the time of death we will see these good deeds up there and the person will love to go over there. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned these four things that are keeping people away from uh, remembering Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from coming back to dunya, ghafla, i'rab, la'ib, and lahu. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَأَسَرُّ النَّجْوَ الَّذِينَ ظَلَمُوا These wrongdoers are secretly whispering to each other. The wrongdoers are secretly whispering to each other, هَلْ هَذَا إِلَّا بَشَرٌ مِثْلُكُمْ To deny Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam what they're saying, they're saying to each other, he is only a messenger like you. He is 